So now we can look at a specific type of redox reaction called the displacement reaction. And what's going to happen here is we're going to take a, a metal and react it with an acid or a metal and a salt. Uh, and we'll see that the metal will replace a different metal in the, in the solution or um, the acid will break up and the metal will replace the acid to form a salt. So the general format for these reactions looks like A, so that's going to be like your metal um, reacting with BX and A is going to replace B in the solution, B is going to go off by itself and you're going to end up with like AX plus B. So a specific example, suppose I took zinc, solid zinc, and I put it in a solution of um, hydrobromic acid. The zinc is going to replace the hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to go off by itself. Now the zinc is going to turn into ions. It's going to become oxidized. And form an ionic compound between zinc and, and bromine. Let's figure out how we make that. And then hydrogen is going to go off by itself. But when hydrogen is by itself, it's diatomic. I'm going to make that a gas. Um, and here you can see you want to make a, a balanced formula here. You want zinc Br2, Zn Br2, right? Because that's plus two charge, plus a minus. So you end up with something that looks like zinc, solid. We want to balance, right? Because I have a two here. So two there. Two HBr gives me zinc. Br2 and some hydrogen gas. So the main point right now is just taking the zinc, it's going to replace the hydrogen. Hydrogen's going to go off by itself and make hydrogen gas. And then you form this other ionic compound. And this is going to be aqueous, that's gas, this is aqueous. So metal can replace hydrogen in an acid sometimes, or metal can replace a metal. So if I had something like manganese, reacting that with um, lead to nitrate. The manganese is going to react with, is going to, sorry, replace the, the lead and the lead will go off by itself. So I'll have manganese in this and lead. Uh, I'm assuming I have this uh, plus two oxidation state. You're going to have a chart that's going to tell you what oxidation numbers um, this will happen for. So this doesn't all, this reaction does not always happen. A metal does not always replace a metal. It depends on how active that metal is. And so we have a chart for that. And you don't have to memorize this chart. You uh, will be given that on an exam. Okay, so let's look at that chart. And then we can go back to this example over here. Um, the metals on the, top of, on the top of this list are very active. So these are active metals, which means they're easy. Uh, they'll, they'll easily be displaced in the reaction. The ones down here are not. So you can see copper, silver, mercury, platinum, gold. These are things that you make coins out of. These are things that you make jewelry out of. Um, you don't want them to, you know, dissociate it to ions every time you react them with water or an acid or something. So these are really stable. You'll see that there's a lot of, um, you know, it needs a really active metal in order to have a replacement reaction with them. These are pretty stable more stable than the ones on top. Uh, so in order to have a reaction happen where this metal will replace another metal or the metal will um, displace the, hyd the uh, hydrogen in the acid. So when you're looking at acids, this is where you want to look at acids. So anything above all the metals above here will have a reaction with the acid. Um, and in order to have a reaction with the, the metal, to have a displacement reaction, um, the solid has to be above the ions in the table. So that's basically solid above ions. So let's look at this example over here. So we have solid copper and we have, um, we're just showing the, the net ionic equation here. So we're comparing solid to ions in this table. Is co if copper is above the silver ions in this, in this table, then the reaction will happen. So you go over here and you see uh, copper is here and the ions are there. So because solid copper is above right here, solid copper is above the silver ions in this table, the reaction will happen and the copper will replace the solid. I'm sorry, the copper will, will replace the silver. So let's do a couple examples of this. So you're going to need to use that table. Okay, so they want us to write a balanced molecular net ionic equation. Um, for the reaction between magnesium 
and cobalt two sulfate. All right, so we have magnesium. That's our one thing by itself. And then we have cobalt two sulfate. So cobalt has a plus two charge, sulfate has a minus two charge. Um, so it's just one to one, this is aqueous. And what we wanna do is we wanna figure out is um, magnesium higher then the cobalt is the thing by itself, the one metal by itself higher than the one that's in the ionic compound. So this is the solid, these are the ions. And so we want to know, is this um, more active than the cobalt? If so, then the magnesium will displace the cobalt in, in the reaction. So you go over here and you see, here's cobalt and here's magnesium. So magnesium is higher in the table. The solid is above the ions, so the reaction will happen. So the solid, the one thing by itself, is higher in the table than the cobalt. So this means this is a more active um, metal. It's going to displace this one. This one's going to go off by itself. You're going to end up with a cobalt solid over here. And then the magnesium becomes incorporated in this magnesium sulfate. So I have magnesium has a plus two charge. Sulfate has a minus two charge. Right, so plus two, minus two, they cancel out. And I have this. So basically, I just went from magnesium solid to magnesium ions. Cobalt in its ionic form, because it's in this ionic compound, to a cobalt solid. That's the molecular equation. Always check to make sure it's balanced. Everything's balanced here. Now, in order to write the net ionic equation, or the, the ionic equation, anything that is a soluble ionic compound will dissociate into ions because it's a strong electrolyte. So this solid's gonna stay together. I don't turn this into ions, it's just magnesium solid. Over here, this is a soluble ionic compound. It's ionic, uh, it's an ionic compound, right? It's a metal and then a group of non-metals, a metal and a polyatomic ion. Same thing as this one, soluble ionic compound. That says aqueous. And then I have cobalt solid over here, so no star on that guy. So I'm gonna split up the ones that have the stars. Magnesium, bring the solid down, just leave it alone. Don't mess with the solids. Cobalt two plus is now aqueous. Sulfate two minus, also aqueous. And then you have magnesium two plus, which is aqueous. And sulfate two minus, aqueous. And then cobalt solid. So don't turn the solid into ions when you're writing the net ionic equation. Right? If it was a solid here, it's going to be a solid here. If it was in an ionic compound, now it becomes ions. Cancel things that are exactly the same on both sides. It's just the sulfate. Magnesium solid is not the same as magnesium ions. Cobalt ions are not the same as the cobalt solid. That's the redox reaction there. Now you can see it. So if we have magnesium plus the cobalt two ions, and now I have magnesium two plus and a cobalt solid. I can tell who's being oxidized and who's being reduced because I can assign these oxidation numbers. Magnesium by itself in its elemental form has an oxidation number of zero. Over here, it's plus two. So I, see, I can see magnesium is increasing in its oxidation number. It's going from zero to plus two. So we know magnesium is being oxidized. So what's being oxidized? Magnesium. And then cobalt is going from plus two to zero, so that number's decreasing, so that's being reduced. So remember, when one thing is one species is being oxidized, the other one is being reduced. The next problem is a little bit different. Um, you're looking at using the table again, but which of the following metals will be oxidized by lead to nitrate? So you want to look at three reactions and then you want to compare the reactivity of all these elements. So basically what they're asking is do any of these reactions happen? If I had zinc solid, will that react with the lead to nitrate? Will a reaction happen? Will the zinc replace the lead? That's only the zinc will only replace the lead if the metal is above the ions in the table. Zinc is above is more reactive than lead. Look at copper as well. Will that reaction happen? Or iron? Oh, yep. All right, so we'll compare um, zinc and lead, and then copper lead, then iron and lead. So we're gonna go back up to this table. Zinc is here, and lead is down there. So zinc will work, zinc solid should work. So what's gonna happen in that reaction? The zinc will replace the lead, lead will go off by itself. So I'll end up with zinc, nitrate, 
and lead solid. Now what about copper and lead? So go back up to the table. Copper's here, lead is there. So lead is above the copper. So that reaction's not going to work. Right, so the copper had to be above the lead. So this one is no reaction. And then finally, iron and lead. Uh, so iron is the solid in lead ions. So because the solid is above the ions in the table, it will happen. Um, also look in the table, there's different oxidation states of iron. So in this one, they have you going from iron to iron 2 plus. So that's how we know which, which ion to use. So iron is going to displace the lead. The lead's going to go off by itself. I'm going to have iron 2, because that's what was at the table. Solid. Okay. So make sure you know how to use that table and be able to write those reactions. Um, you can also calculate oxidation numbers here to figure out who's being oxidized, who's being reduced. You can write the net ionic equations for any of these as well. Um, if you were to do that, you know, this would split up, this one would split up, um, and then your nitrates are going to cancel. This one would split up, and this one would split up, and again, your only your nitrates would cancel. Make sure that when you write the net ionic equation, just like we did over here, the solid does not cancel with the ions. So magnesium solid, magnesium ions, um, different species, so they're not going to cancel the net ionic equation. It looks like that. So make sure you do a bunch of homework problems on, on this kind of thing.